Okay, here we go. In general, outside of the prison, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. You've got the Grand Canyon, you've got Sedona, all these red rocks and cliffs. And it's like considered like a, a new age um, vortex site. You've got all these massive cactuses. Unfortunately, a lot of the cactus have got bullet holes in them. They made it, this huaro is the state flower of Arizona, which grows 30, 40 feet tall, I think. And they made it illegal to shoot them now because one guy, he shot a huaro and it fell down and killed him. Uh, yeah. Flower power. <laughs> <laughs> Good thinking, yes. Anyone got anything else? You were shy once to death. One of the most popular questions I get asked is, did you drop the soap in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> I never dropped the soap in the shower. Um, I never got raped while I was in the... It was like the men the youngster who got gang raped just before they got out and they sent him to lockdown for his own protection. I think it was a Chicano prison gang that raped him. Um, the showers, you know, I saw these movies. It's a communal shower, big tattooed men. Skinny guy gets thrown in there, gets brutalized. I thought that was going to be me. But the showers are like puppy holes on the end of the room, so you do have a fair degree of privacy in them. But it's where the gangs prefer to smash and murder people because they're out of view with the cameras. That guy, the one, the Erwin Rowe, who's smashing that guy, murdering that guy in the video I described earlier, because it was caught on the CCTV camera in the day room, he was actually sentenced to death for committing that. They used that evidence. Against him. So they prefer to get you in the shower area to tell you the cameras and the drivers that can be used to convict them on it. There's just so much of it going on. You've got hundreds of prisoners watching over, I and mean, you've got hundreds of prisoners watched over by two guards. It's basically kangaroo courts all day by these gangs. This is the side who lives and dies. It's absolutely flooded with drugs as well. There's more drugs in there than anyone on the face of the earth. Head over in crystal meth. How they get the drugs in is, People outside of the prison, they wrap them in cellophane, condoms, blooms, and they bring them to the visitation room. Now, in medium security, it's like a visit at a table, and you sat up to the prisoner. They'll bring a live baby, for example, and the drugs will be in the baby's nappy. They'll sit down at the table, the prisoners will distract the guards intentionally, and then they'll pass the drugs under the table, and the prisoner will shove them in his behind. So that's what keystering is. Guys who specialize in this are called mules. They get paid a percentage of what they bring in. And you'd think they get noticed by the guards just on the walk alone when they come back from visit because they've got all these packages inside them. They're walking like this. Now, after every visit, you're thoroughly strip searched. If you're a man, you've got to get completely naked in front of the guard. You've got to raise this. You've got to turn around, bend over, spread your buttocks and cough. So those mules have got those packages so deeply embedded that they don't peek out during these strip searches. And they pride themselves on how many they can store in there. Now there's also a foreskin search. I'll leave the details of that to your imagination. Yeah. So that's the same in England, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, all, that, all, that, all that happens in the British jails as well. If any of you have seen A Clockwork Orange, where Alex is arrested, the first thing is they take his clothes, and they've got the flashlight, he's bent over, his buttocks spread, and they've got the flashlight, and they're looking up his backside. And it's really embarrassing and degrading, he's getting used to all that. It takes quite a while with the constant strip searches and, and uh, 